All right. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to uh, Math 155. After uh, medyo matagal-tagal pala tayong hindi nakita-kita, uh, we canceled our uh, our uh, two this uh, our two meetings before the the reading break. Tapos isang linggo kayo nakapahinga, hopefully para sa reading break. So kumusta naman kayo guys? Ano mga pinakabalahan yon this past uh, two weeks? Pinabal nyo ba yung mga episodes ng paborito nyo series na hindi nyo pa natatapos? Or kinailangan yung mag, uh, maghabol sa inyong ACADS? How is it? Kausapin nyo naman ako guys. <laughs> Grabe, snabish talaga kayo. Ano? <laughs> but anyway, I hope you guys uh, found um, found some time to relax uh, during the, the reading break. And um, I hope also you you already uh, saw my comments and my feedback to your problem set number uh, number two. Um, actually, I, uh, I am really quite impressed with uh, how you are performing with the problem sets. Uh, so far, I'm looking at your standings. So if you go to uh, Canvas, uh, log in into your account, go to grades, and you will see your uh, relative standing. Uh, as of the midterms, midterm na palang ayon, right? Nangangalahati na yung SEM. And I'm looking at the average for the class. The average is about uh, 94.37%, which is very good. One to five on the average and grades nyo. So hopefully, guys, you can keep it up uh, until the end of the semester. So, and then also, um, please check out homework number five uh, because uh, I misread. Uh, actually, I forgot the details of our course syllabus. And I thought we will have um, we have four uh, problem sets. Yun pala nung chineko yung core syllabus. Uh, tatlo lang pala supposedly yung problem sets. And I already gave you two. I was thinking to give you two more. So I have a proposal uh, to increase the number of problem sets from two to uh, from three to four. Para dalawa before the reading break at dalawa after the uh, the reading break. But of course, since we have already declared the number of problem sets in the course syllabus, I would like to get your per your permission, or at least the permission of a majority of you to change the problem set. So yun yung laman ng homework number five. Feel free to give your honest choice. You can check the box to uh, to agree with my proposal of increasing the number of problem sets, or you can disagree. That's perfectly fine. Uh, I can go. Uh, I can uh, live with uh, only three problem sets for you. So, uh, pakisagutan, wala pang nananalo. Hindi ko pa nakukuha yung, I guess there are 24 of you. So, I think I need to get at least 13 votes, uh, 13 yes votes, para mabago ko yung core syllabus. Pero so far, I think sa, sa canvas, uh, paano ko nga ba kinumpute yung standings nyo? Uh, hold on, check ko lang ha. Yeah, I computed the problem sets to be 20% apiece. So, ibig sabihin, uh, I am total ay 60. So, in Canvas, uh, there are three problem sets, 20% each. Pero ang proposal ko nga, proposal ko nga ay gawin silang apat na tig 15%. So, once I get the consent of a majority of you, I will change that uh, that computations in Canvas. But if you will, uh, if you uh, if the majority will decide not to increase the number of problem sets, then that's fine. Uh, kaya lang, kaya ko sinilip yung course syllabus natin. Hindi ko naman ini-specify na 20% each yung problem sets sa uh, course guide. So nakalagay lang doon problem sets, tatlo sila, tapos 60%. So I might make uh, some um, some adjustments on that para medyo balance lang na yung problem sets na dalawa, which corresponds to half of the semester, will be worth at 30%. And then the single uh, problem set at the end of the second half of the semester will be worth 30%. Para lang medyo balance yung distribution ng percentages. Uh, uh, roughly equivalent or equal dun sa or commensurate dun sa amount of time we uh, we uh, we spent on these topics, right? So uh, I hope I'll get uh, the response of uh, most, if not all of you, by November 15th. And don't forget to answer that because that's uh, that's uh, that's your quiz, the first quiz after the reading break. That's five over five, so pakisagutan na lamang. All right. 
So, um, okay, what else? Do we have some other housekeeping matters? Uh, if you have some uh, some questions or meron kayo mga reklamo about uh, the problem set, uh, kindly send me an email or uh, a chat via Teams para masagot ko yung mga tanong nyo if ever meron man. Okay? Because otherwise, today we'll uh, proceed with the third uh, unit of the course, which is about continuity of functions of real variables. Okay, so uh, I uploaded the first draft of uh, the work text or the lecture notes for uh, Unit 3 late last night, but I made some uh, some changes uh, this afternoon. So I need to edit my new version of Unit 3, so you kindly check it out. Or you can wait until the end before you download your finalized copy because you know me, I want to change some things. Um, uh, midway, or I find some corrections midway, so kindly look out for them. But essentially, this uh, unit will have six uh, sections, and hopefully, we'll be able to tackle the first uh, two sections today, or majority of the two sections, uh, at least this week. Okay. So uh, basically, the first section talks about the limit of functions, and this is not new to you because you already knew how to compute limits of functions, and that's basically what you did as your first topic in math 36. Tama nga ba? Medyo matagal-tagal na since I last taught uh, math 36. I think it's uh, it's five years ago since, or five or six years ago since I last handled math 36. And in 2018, nabago yung math 36, tama? So, pero uh, I think the consensus is, you know, uh, how to evaluate limits of functions. And as math majors, you already saw how we define the limit of functions, okay? And this is one uh, important topic, pero kung yisipin natin, if we will trace the historical development of calculus, it seems that the idea of limits of functions and eventually continuity of functions is not um, developed alongside the notion of, or not, they are not developed prior to the, the development of the notion of derivatives and integrals. Because in mga panahon yon, especially before the 1600s, ang idea ay practical mathematics. We want to, um, or most mathematicians work on the practical aspects of mathematics. There are just some of them who uh, who look at mathematics as a logical or an axiomatic system. So kaya nung inimbento ni, uh, ni inimbento and the discover, whichever um, uh, school of thought you're subscribing to, ni uh, Sir Isaac Newton at saka ni, um, ni Gottfried, uh, uh, ni, ni Leibniz, um, calculus, they are not into uh, the uh, the technical nitty gritties of this as bodies of knowledge, but they're looking for the practical application of it. So differentiation was widely used by um, uh, by Newton, Leibniz, and Fermat in the 1600s. Pero yung concept ng continuity ay dati pang um, ay uh, I inintroduce lamang or finormalize lamang ni Cushy, ni Bolsano, at saka ni Weierstrass nung 1820s. So imagine that the gap, kasi if you will notice na, if you look now at uh, any calculus book, laging una yung concept ng limit of a function, then continuity of a function, right? So laging na una yung notion ng continuity before we talk about differentiability and uh, integrability. However, in the historical developments, differentiation came first before uh, we uh, we formalized the notion of continuity. Medyo meron ngang 200 years na gap or two century gap between these two concepts. And why is that so? Because uh, during the the 1600s and even prior to that, uh, in, ang concepto na ang concepto ng mga tao ng functions ay ito yung mga functions na continuous at smooth. So meron kaagad silang attached na notion na kapag ka function sila dapat ay walang discontinuity. So dapat ang graph nitong mga functions na to ay kaya yung i-drawing without lifting your pen which is basically the geometric notion of continuity. So ibig sabihin nung mga unang panahon prior to the 1800s the idea of functions are merely reserved for polynomials, sines, cosines and different iterations of them. Because basically they are trying to model um, important quantities that occur in nature. So sa nature naman, temperature, the temperature function is always continuous. 
hindi ka pwedeng from zero degree Celsius magja-jump ka kagad sa 100 degree Celsius. So pag nagmo-model ka ng heat, you are heating an object from say zero degrees papuntang 100, dadaanan mo syempre as a function of time yung mga iba't ibang values in between zero and 100. So hindi nagkakaroon ng jump sa mga models for most of na of natural uh, phenomena, for most natural phenomena. So kaya no mga panahon yon, yeah, we think uh, the people thought of functions as those that uh, are always continuous and smooth. And uh, when uh, they started the, when they started formalizing mathematics, sa kalam lang na isip na hold on, merong mga functions or pwede nating i-define yung mga functions in a far more general way rather than looking at them as continuous objects. So alimbawa, um, na define na natin yung mga functions that are not necessarily continuous or we gave the generic notion that functions is simply a rule that assigns to every element of the domain a unique element of the codomain. So but prior to that, ang alam lang ang inaaccept lang ng mga mathematicians to be called functions are polynomials and uh, sines and cosines. And then they didn't have any problem with that, especially when they uh when in the 1800s they started formalizing everything napakita pa rin nila na halos lahat pala ng continuous functions ay limit lamang ng polynomials at saka sines and cosines. And hence, the notion of Taylor series and uh, Fourier series. Okay? So, siguro yung mga students ko dito ng Math 155, uh, ng Math 174, hopefully you remember Weierstrass uh, approximation theorem. Kahit anong continuous function sa so isang close interval AB ay laging na-approximate ng isang polynomial. Or in the parlance of math 155, that translates to every uh, continuous function is a limit of some sequence of polynomials. Tapos ganun din, um, Fourier uh, prove na kahit anong continuous function ay limit lamang ng summation ng sines and cosines. And that's what the... Uh, we know today as Fourier series expansions. So, etong dalawang notions that to allow the, the mathematicians to bridge the gap between just thinking of polynomials as, uh, or uh, of functions simply as polynomials or sines and cosines into the more formal definition of functions and eventually a formalization of what it meant to be continuous. Okay. So, isa pang naging problema nila ng mga panahon na yon, especially in uh, in the context of uh, limits of functions, is this uh, function which is uh, discovered or which was made famous by Dirichlet, by uh, the uh, German mathematician Peter Dirichlet. Uh, this is the function which is piecewise in nature. This is um, one if x is rational and it is zero if x is irrational. So when we are developing the notion of a limit of a function, oh, uh, siguro, just to uh, to elicit uh, participation from you guys, uh, ano nga ba yung intuitive notion ng limit ng isang function? Kasi before tayo makapunta sa continuity, laging inumpisa natin sa limit of a function. So can anybody remind me, ano nga ba yung notion natin ng limit ng isang function? What does it take for a number to be the limit of a function as the variable approach a certain number? Oh, by the way, yung scores nyo pala sa problem set ay wala pa yung bonus for those few who uh, recited. Though maliit lang naman yung bonus sa recitation, huwag kayo masyadong mag-expect ka. Pero... Sayang din siyang pampuno if you missed, say, um, a very tiny detail in uh, in your uh, in your work. Posibleng mapunan yun ng mga bonus sa recitation. But yeah, anybody who can remind me, ano nga ba yung uh, notion ng limit ng isang function? Sir, can I, I try po? Oh. Oh, yeah, sure. Go ahead, CK. Uh, para maging limit po siya, first of all, the f of a should exist, then yung one-sided limits should both exist, then mm -hmm. uh, the limit nung ano, uh, 
dapat since dapat mag-equal yung one-sided limits, it should be equal to f of a. Parang ganun po yung naalala ko po. Aha, uh-huh. thank you CK. You're on the right track pero medyo technical pa rin yung sagot mo. Uh, okay na sa akin yung kwento lang, yung intuitive notion. But I think what you're trying to uh, to define there is the notion of continuity, right? So meron ka limit Sorry. from the left, limit from the right, dapat equal sila dun sa function value. So that's right. Uh, thank you, uh, CK. Pero uh, some, uh, can somebody give me, halimbawa, wala akong alam sa Math 36, so sa calculus, ano yung limit ng isang function? Or what does it take for the limit of f of x as x approaches, uh, say, a number x of 0 to be equal to L? Kailan nangyayari yan? Ah, hindi kailangan technical. Walang magsasabi ng epsilon delta, ha? Ano yung, uh, ano yung intuitive notion? Ano yung layman's explanation para dito? Oh, practice nyo to. Baka sa, problem, sa susunod na problem set, isa yan sa mga essay questions. So, how will you, uh, how will you explain to a layman the concept of a limit of a function? Uh, yes, Christine? Try ko lang po. Uh, yung, uh, yung limit po, uh, parang describe niya po how the graph behaves or how a point behaves pag ina-approach niya po yung certain point. For example, yung, pag ina-approach niya po x sub 0, and not necessarily ano po yung itsura niya kapag nasa x sub 0 na po talaga siya. Parang ano po yung itsura niya kapag papunta po siya doon sa x sub 0. Okay. Uh, thank you, Christine. That's, uh, that's right. So, ang konsepto natin ng limit ng isang function ay saan papalapit ng papalapit yung function values habang yung argument o yung, uh, yung number dun sa loob ng function ay palapit ng palapit sa x sub 0, right? So, essentially, uh, what happens to the function values as the x's become very, very close to x sub 0? Tapos pwede natin itong itali dun sa natutunan natin from last, uh, from last unit about the limit of a sequence. Kasi di ba limit din yun? Uh, meron tayong listahan ng mga, ng mga numbers, an ordered list of uh, numbers. So pag kinuha natin yung limit ng sequence na yun, we meant looking at what happens at the tail end of the sequence. Anong nangyayari habang palayo tayo ng palayo dun sa listahan? Saan papalapit ng papalapit yung mga terms dun sa ating listahan? Now, we will try to generalize this concept into uh, the, uh, the limit of a function where in the domain is not necessarily the set of natural numbers. So basically, uh, pag sinabi natin yung limit statement na to ay totoo, ibig sabihin, habang yung mga arguments, yung mga x's, palapit ng palapit sa x sub 0, gano, uh, dapat yung mga function values ay palapit ng palapit sa value ni L. Okay? So yun yung konsepto ng limit. So basically we might be in uh, we uh, we could have just defined limits that way. So peding definition 1. The limit of a function as x approaches x sub 0 is equal to l if and only if um, the function values become closer and closer to l as the x's become closer and closer to x sub 0. And that might look fine, right? Kaya lang magkakaroon tayo ng problema uh, which led to the development of a more tedious definition of a limit of a function as what we will see later or what you have seen in Math 36. Siguro, one classic example is Dirichlet's function. So, on Dirichlet functions, ang function value ni f ay equal kay 1 kapag ka si x ay rational. Tapos, 0 siya kapag ka si x ay irrational. Now, the idea here is, kapag ka palapit ako ng palapit, halimbawa kay 1 half, how will I define the limit of f of x as x approaches 1 half? Okay? So basically, following our notion kanina, or our, in, uh, our intuitive uh, notion of a limit of a function, we're looking for kanino palapit ng palapit yung mga function values habang si x palapit ng palapit kay 1 half. And we don't care about what happens at x equals 1 half. Gusto nating malaman ano yung nangyayari habang palapit tayo ng palapit kay 1 half. Hindi kailangan na kay 1 half na tayo. All right? Now, the idea here is, oh, hindi pala pwedeng ganun lamang yung pagkakadefine ko ng limit kasi medyo may ambiguity siya. Halimbawa, pwede kong sabihin ang limit na to ay equal kay 1. Kasi habang kumukuha ako ng mga rational numbers, mapa nasa kaliwaman o nasa 
kana ni one half, ang function values nila ay laging equal kay one. Again, when I pick any rational number, either to the left or to the right of one half, and by the density property of rationals in R, ibig sabihin makakakuha ko palagi ng isang rational number na super lapit kay one half. Habang dumaran ako sa mga rational numbers na yon, mula sa kaliwa at mula sa kanan ni one half, palapit ako ng palapit kay one half, yung mga function values hindi nagbabago. Parehas, lahat sila ay equal kay one. Alright? However, if I will approach one half in a different fashion, for instance, I will go to one half from the left and from the right, pero daraan ako sa mga irrational numbers. And again, that's fine because we know that the set of irrational numbers is dense in R. Ibig sabihin, sa pagitan ng dalawang real number, laging may irrational pa. Tama? So, ibig sabihin, meron akong madadaan ng rational numbers na palapit ng palapit kay one half galing sa kaliwa at palapit ng palapit kay one half galing sa kanan. And if I do so, kung, dun, kung yun yung dadaanan ko para makarating kay one half, yung mga function values nila ay laging equal kay zero. Does that mean that I will also accept the limit of uh, f of x as x approaches one half to be equal to zero? And that will create some complications, right? Because now we have found two ways on how to approach one half such that the limit would, uh, would uh, result or the limiting process will result to two different numbers, namely one and zero. So this prompted the uh, mathematicians who formalized the concept of limits and continuity to be very particular in how they will define the notion of uh, the limit of a function. And hence, that's why the epsilon delta definition that you dreaded back in Math 36 is, uh, was born. Ganun siya, ganun siya pinanganak. Kasi kahit gusto nating mapasimple yung konsepto ng limit, kasi napaka, naka, napakadali niyang isipin intuitively or graphically, ang dali niyang maintindihan. Pero pag pinasukan ng epsilon delta, patay na. Mahirap, mahirap intindihan yung definition. But I hope at this point you understand why we really need to, uh, to use that definition. Okay? Because we want to be very particular with it and leave no loophole in our theory. And yung natutunan natin mula sa Math 36, titingin ka lang daw sa kaliwa, titingin ka sa kanan, palapit ka ng palapit, dun sa number x sub 0. Pag nag-agree yung dalawang limit, ibig sabihin ay equal sila. Pero you will see in this example that that might not be enough. Kasi kung palapit ako ng palapit sa kaliwa, through rational numbers, the limit is 1. Kung palapit ako ng palapit mula sa kanan ni 1 half, through rational numbers, the limit is equal to 1. Then per that definition, we must accept that the limit is equal to 1. And yet, if you will consider irrational numbers from the left of 1 half and from the right of 1 half, ibang istorya na yon. Zero yung makukuha nating limit. So what we will do here at this point in Math 155 is to try to generalize the notions that we have uh, that we have learned in Math 36. Okay. So if we formalize natin siya at i uh, translate natin siya number one sa concepto either ng neighborhoods or number two we can take advantage of uh, the notion of uh, limit of sequences that we learned from the previous uh, from the previous uh, unit. Kaya tawag ito ay functional limit kasi meron tinatawag na sequential limit. Um, I am just not sure what version of, uh, I'm still not sure what version of limits will I introduce to you guys, but I think we'll go with sequential limit rather than the topological version. Siguro yung topological version, nakita nyo na siya sa math uh, one, uh, ano ba ang topology? Math 168 nga ba? Tagal ko na hindi nagturo, hindi ko natanda yung numbering. Or 168 yata, or 138. But sa one, uh, one of those uh, courses na siguro na-define nyo ano yung uh, continuity or pagiging uh, isang limit point sa isang topological space. Pero at this point, we know what a limit point of a set is. All right? And we will, uh, we will uh, build on that to develop or to redevelop and reformalize what we learned in Math 36. Now, here um, we have definition 3.1, which tells us when is the limit of uh, a function equal to L. So if we look at this uh, in details. So we consider a function f from a set A to the set of real numbers. 
So, dito pa lang sa preamble ng definition, you will see the difference with uh, with MAT 36. So, um, can anyone remind me, ano ba yung pinagkaiba nitong preamble ng definition na to mula sa MAT 36 definition? Or yung definition nyo sa elementary calculus uh, um, calculus course nyo? Tandaan nyo pa ba? Or kinalimutan nyo na, nung nakatakas na kayo sa 30 series, Okay, bye-bye, uh, Epsilon Delta. Pero ito pala, makikita pa rin natin sila. So how does this dif uh, differ from uh, the MAT 36 definition of a limit of a function? Can you guys help me up, uh, help me out? Ayaw. <laughs> so if you remember from MAT 36, you, def you started the definition of a limit of a function by saying that let C be a number, uh, uh, let F be a function defined in some open interval containing C except possibly at C, right? So in assume natin na yung function ay defined sa isang open interval um, which might not include the number C or um, sorry, an open interval containing C, but the function need not be defined at uh, the number C. All right. Pero ngayon, medyo gagamitin natin yung mga technical terms na 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 natutunan natin before, and we will not restrict our functions to be defined on open intervals. Kasi pagka hindi siya nag-exist, kasi dati sa MAT 36, kapag ka hindi siya defined sa isang open interval, hindi na natin siya hinahanapan ng limit, right? For instance, the classic example would be uh, f of x equals square root of x. And then we say now our, our tools in MAT36 is not, is not enough to determine what is the limit of square root of x as x approaches zero because the definition in MAT36 doesn't cover the case for square root of x as x approaches zero. Because this function square root of x is not defined in some open interval containing zero. Because ang kahit anong open interval na nagko-contain kay zero ay dapat mag-contain ng mga negative numbers. And um, yung mga negative numbers na yon ay hindi real number yung square root nila. So ibig sabihin, by that uh, preamble in the MAT 36 definition, we cannot talk about the limit of square root of x as x approaches zero. Medyo misnomer nga na sabihin natin that the limit doesn't exist. Kasi hindi niya nasa satisfy yung preamble ng definition. But I guess the more technical or the more proper way of saying it is that the definition that we were given in MAT 36 doesn't cover the case when the function f is not defined in some open interval uh, containing the number uh, 0 and the function is not defined at 0. So, hindi enough yung definition sa MAT 36 para masabi kung nag exist ba or hindi yung limit ng square root of x as x approaches 0. Okay? Pero dito sa MAT uh, 155 definition, it is fine because there is no restriction on the set A. So, kailangan lamang si A ay isang arbitrary subset ni R where C is a limit point of that set A. So kung uh, dinidefine natin yung limit at the number C for any limit point of the domain. All right? So we consider a function F defined uh, on a subset A of R where C is a limit point. Okay? Then we say that the limit of F of X as X approaches C is equal to L if and only if sa kahit na nung epsilon greater than zero, however small it is, there will exist a delta greater than zero, which we can choose to be very, very small and can be chosen depending on epsilon, such that whenever x is within a delta neighborhood of c, all right, or you can say that the absolute value of x minus c is less than zero, uh, is greater than zero, but less than delta, okay, then it follows that uh, f of x is within an epsilon neighborhood of L or that uh, the absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon. 
Okay. So the most part of the MAT36 definition is still here. Actually, ang nabago nga lamang ay yung preamble because we want to cover almost all cases here in MATH 155. So ngayon, kahit yung function nyo ay hindi defined sa, ay hindi defined sa isang open interval containing C, that's fine. As long as it is defined on some subset of A, uh, some subset of R, kung saan limit point niya yung number kung saan nyo kinocompute yung limit. Okay? And then the same epsilon delta thing is still the is still the goal here. So this epsilon delta definition can be thought of as a challenge and a response definition. Okay. In the sense that the challenge is made in the form of choosing an arbitrary epsilon. Okay. Pipilia ko ng epsilon. Usually epsilon is chosen to be very, very small. Ibig sabihin gano man kaliit yung epsilon. Dapat may mahanap ka na response. And that response is in the form of a number delta, which is usually small and dependent on the value of epsilon. Or uh, not necessarily dependent, but it can be chosen to be dependent on epsilon. Okay. Now, what is the requirement for that uh, delta response? It should guarantee that whenever your number x is within delta distance from the limit point c, then f of x must be within epsilon uh, distance from the number L. Okay, And just, uh, just for emphasis, we say here that kung sa definition makikita nyo na um, meron dito uh, strict uh, less than between the absolute value and zero, that means the absolute value of x minus c cannot be equal to zero because we don't care if the function, uh, if the number c uh, belongs to the domain A, right? Ang, re ang requirement lang natin dito, yung number C, dapat ay isang limit point ni A. And hopefully you remember na posibleng ang isang number na wala, sa isa, wala dun sa set na yon ay maging limit point pa rin, right? Uh, the only exception is that if your A is closed or if your set uh, A is closed, wherein it will contain all of its limit points. So basically, yan pa rin. The same old uh, definition for the limit, pero ngayon, kinoconsider na natin yung mass generic cases. Okay? Now, the next three examples shows us how to, uh, how to prove that certain, um, uh, that, the, that the limit of some functions as x approaches certain numbers is equal to a certain real number. So ito yung ginawa nyo sa MAT36. So question, quick poll. Kailangan pa ba nating daanan yung examples 3.1, 3.2, and 3.3? Uh, what's what's uh, what uh, what do you want to do? Skip na ba natin? Tandaan nyo pa ba yung proving epsilon delta ng limit ng isang function? Or do you want to uh, still go through these examples as sort of a review? What do you think, guys? Salita naman kayo, guys. <laughs> so medyo uh, 36 minutes na akong uh, nagsasalita rito. Uh, huh. Kaya nyo pa bang mag-prove ng epsilon delta for specific cases? Or nakakahiyaan lang kayong mag-suggest. <laughs> so okay, may yung mag-suggest. Uh, feeling ko yung iniisip nyo, yan din yung iniisip ng classmates nyo. So nakakahiyaan lang kayong malamang. So uh, what should we do? Mm, sige na nga. Let's uh, take a quick look again at these examples kasi walang nagsasalita. So uh, I'll assume uh, na you want to have a review about proving uh, using the epsilon delta definition. Okay. Now again, in proving limits, we want to take a look at, uh, uh, we want to find a response delta to a challenge epsilon. So limbawa, dito sa example one, we want to prove that the limit of 2x minus 3 as x approaches 4 is equal to 5. So basically, yung preliminary analysis, we'll start with uh, a challenge epsilon. So given an epsilon greater than zero, you can think of epsilon as a very small number, right? So we want to find a delta 
such that this uh, implication will be true, such that if the absolute value of x minus 4, because the limit point uh, we are evaluating the limit at is 4, right? So it's the limit point no domain, which is r. So I less than 0 uh, is greater than 0, but less than delta. Then the following inequality must be satisfied. Dapat yung f of x, which is uh, 2x minus 3, minus the supposed limit, the supposed limit is 5, must be less than epsilon. All right? So we want to find a delta that can guarantee that whenever this is true, this will follow. So basically, gusto natin maghanap ng isang bound mula dito involving this, uh, this uh, expression over here. So ang gagawin natin, let's manipulate this guy and look at what will happen to it, right? So note that 2x minus 3 minus 5 is the same as 2x minus 8. The thing is we want to connect it with the assumption, okay? Gusto kong makonect ito sa inequality na to. Usually ito lang namang uh, kalahate ng uh, continued inequality yung titignan ko. I want to relate this guy, absolute value of f of x minus l, to the inequality x minus 4 less than delta. So basically, gusto tong masulat na merong absolute value of x minus 4 and see how it relates to the delta. Okay? So basically here, madali lang siya, pwede ako mag-factor out ng 2 and see that I'll have absolute value of x minus 4. And I want to force the issue, all right, that, uh, kasi alam ko na yung uh, x minus 4 ay mas maliit kay delta. Tapos, pwede ko siyang palta ng delta, so gusto kong 2 delta should be less than epsilon. Okay? So I want to force the issue that 2 delta would be less than epsilon. Kasi kung mangyayari yun, mm -hmm. kung ang 2 delta ay mas maliit sa epsilon, Ibig sabihin, ito ay magiging mas maliit sa 2 delta kasi part ng assumption yung x minus 4 ay mas maliit sa delta pero yung 2 delta finors natin to be less than epsilon. Okay? So we want to force the issue that 2 delta would be smaller than epsilon and so as an answer to the, um, to the epsilon challenge, we can choose delta to be any number okay, such that it is less than, um, or we can choose delta to be less than or equal to 2 over, eps uh, sorry, uh, less than epsilon over 2, okay? By simply dividing both sides by 2. Actually, you can uh, be more, you can be stricter about it. Oops, nabubura siya lahat. Pero, pwede ko siyang gawing less than alamang. okay? So we can, we want to choose delta to be less than epsilon over 2. At yung sinasabi ko kanina na yung choice ng delta ay posibleng nakadepende kay epsilon. Kasi ang ginagawa nga natin, sinusulat ko yung f of x minus l in a, in a way similar to x minus c less than delta. So I can involve uh, delta into the mix and I want to force that uh, value involving delta to be less than epsilon. And that will give me a choice for delta depending on the choice of epsilon. Okay? So kapag kabinigyan ako ng epsilon, ang lagi kong response ay epsilon over 2. Okay? Now let's look at how this figures in into a formal proof. Okay? So prelim analysis yan. Okay, here's the formal proof. I will not rewrite it kasi review lang naman to ng uh, math 36. So we start with uh, assuming the challenge epsilon greater than 0. And we will give our response. The response is delta equals epsilon over 2, which is still greater than 0 because epsilon is greater than 0. And then we want to show that if this inequality is true, dapat yung f of x minus l i less than epsilon. Okay? But the choice of our delta guarantees, dahil yung delta sinabi natin ay equal or mas maliit kay epsilon over 2, we can say that absolute value of x minus 4 is less than epsilon. And then we want from here 
we want to show that absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon, right? Yan yung gusto nating tumbukin. So first thing is to multiply both sides of the inequality by 2. That will give us this. And then simplify the left-hand side. We'll get 2x minus 8 less than epsilon. And then rewrite it into the form f of x minus l. We'll get this guy, which is essentially what we wanted to show. And this proves that the limit of f of x as x approaches 4 is equal to 5. All right. So uh, the, hopefully now refresh your memory in your how to prove uh, limits of, uh, of functions using the epsilon delta definition. Okay, questions? What happened, man? Okay, let's try the second example. And the second example is one case that is not covered with the math 36 definition. Because here we are assuming the function f to be defined on the half closed, half open interval 0, 1. Ang usapan sa math 36 dapat ang domain ng function natin ay isang open interval containing the number 1. But here we are evaluating the limit of the function x squared plus x, considering only that the domain of the function is the half open, half closed interval 1. So itong uh, domain na to ay uh, hindi nga open interval containing 1, all right? So, sa math 36, sa definition sa math 36, so sa elementary calculus nyo, hindi nyo makukompute itong limit kasi hindi nag apply yung definition. Hindi na satisfy yung preamble ng definition. But for us here in math 155, we have generalized the concept of limits to admit any function, uh, uh, to admit any type of domain, as long as the number c is a limit point of that domain. Ano ba yung number c natin dito? A number c natin ay 1. Okay, so c1 definitely is a limit point of the closed interval 0 to 1, right? We uh, we can find a sequence that is enclosed in this uh, half closed, half open interval, which will converge to the number 1, okay? Or you can think of it using the definition of uh, of being a limit point sa kahit anong epsilon neighborhood around 1, lagi kang may mahanap na intersection with this set that contains elements of that set, right? Any epsilon neighborhood centered at 1 will contain an element of this closed interval. Yun yung pagiging limit point. So base dun sa definition natin dito sa math 155 ng limits, posible nating mahanap yung limit ng f of x as x approaches 1, even if the domain doesn't satisfy the requirement ng math 36, okay? So we'll still go to preliminary analysis, x squared plus x, limit niya ay 1. So essentially here, the PA will look like this. So given the challenge epsilon greater than 0, we want to find the response delta greater than 0, such that if the absolute value of x minus uh, 1, okay, is strictly between 0 and delta, then x, uh, x squared plus x minus the supposed limit, uh, x squared plus x minus 2, should be less than epsilon, okay? But the same, uh, but the same idea here. Um, so, uh, we will uh, we want to analyze x squared plus x minus l or f of x minus l and write it in a manner so that I will see x minus 1 somewhere in here. All right. So it be in dito, pwede ko tong isulat in factored form as what? x minus 1 times x plus 2. Right. And we don't have a problem with uh, with the absolute value of x minus 1, yan yung dahilan kung bakit ako nag-factor, kasi alam ko yung absolute value ng x minus 1 ay mas maliit sa delta. So I can replace the first factor by delta and hope to get a larger number, okay? Times something that bounds absolute value of x plus 2. And what will happen is that I will force that whatever upper bound I get here will be bounded above by epsilon just to satisfy the requirement of the definition, okay? 
So kailangan makahanap ako dito ng appropriate replacement for x plus 2 that doesn't depend on x. Tapos ifo-force ko na lang na yung resulting product dito ay mas maliit sa epsilon. Then I'll, I'll just uh, solve for delta. Okay? Now, how will I get that, uh, that uh, second factor here in my target inequality? Well, babalik kayo kung saan defined yung function, right? Remember that the domain of our function is the half closed, half open interval 0 to 1. So we know that all x's leave on this, uh, on this uh, interval over here. So we know that the absolute value of x is uh, between 0 and 1. All right? Kasi nasa half close and half open interval siya. I want to get a bound for the absolute value of x plus 2. But if you use the triangle inequality here, this can be written as absolute value of x minus 1 times absolute value of x plus 2, right? So definitely ito ay mas malaki kesa dun sa second factor, all right? So uh, I can, in turn, just look for a bound for the absolute value of x plus 2. But I know that x's leave on the close interval, uh, on the interval 0 to 1. So ibig sabihin totoo, itong inequality na to. I'll just add 2 to both sides or to all sides. We'll get 2 less than or equal to absolute value of x plus 2 less than 3. So basically here, I see that the second factor here in the preceding inequality is always bounded above by 3. So I can replace this guy by 3 and get a larger number. Okay. And now I will force that uh, 3 delta should be less than epsilon. I will do so kasi gusto ko ito ay maging totoo. But I know that the absolute value of x squared plus x minus 2 ay hindi lalabis ng 3 delta. So para mag-garantee na itong uh, absolute value na yan ay hindi lalampas ng epsilon, dapat yung 3 delta ay hindi lumampas ng epsilon. And so here I can get the response delta and the, it will suggest that I can choose delta to be any number that is not greater than epsilon over 3. Okay? So yun yung nakuha natin mula sa prelim analysis. And then I'm going to go back to write the formal proof. So formal proof niya. Okay? Merong kang challenge epsilon, which is greater than 0. And again, I'm going to choose delta, my typo rito, to be equal to epsilon over 3. Epsilon over 2 will not work because epsilon over 2 is definitely larger than epsilon over 3. Pero kung ang typo ko rito ay, halimbawa, epsilon over 5, pwede kong pangatawanan na yun yung intended kong solution. Pero sayang, wala kong lusot sa typo na to. So ang delta ay pipiliin ko to be any number less than or equal to epsilon over 3. Okay? So then, uh, if... Uh, Again, remember, part ng assumption, ang gusto natin ipakita rito sa definition, we want to show that absolute value of x minus 1 being strictly between 0 and delta implies um, x squared plus x minus L to be less than epsilon. Yan yung gusto natin ipakita, right? So we can assume conditional proof yung antecedent. So suppose that the absolute value of x minus 1 is less than delta, and also the assumption that x leaves on this interval. Okay? So the fact that x minus 1 is less than delta will give us this. So kunin yung f of x minus l, expanded form, factored form. And then we know that x minus 1 is less than delta. So this guy will be replaced by the delta factor you see here. But we already known this from the uh, preliminary analysis. And then the fact that x is on this interval imply that the absolute value of x plus 2 is less than 3. That's why you get 3 delta, which is, uh, will be larger than f of x minus l. But delta was chosen to be equal to epsilon over 3. So I can replace delta by epsilon over 3. And voila, we get epsilon in the final, uh, the final line here. 
So definitely what we have shown is that as long as x minus 1 has absolute value less than delta, then it will follow that f of x minus l will be strictly less than epsilon. And that completes the proof. Okay. Ha. Huh. Uh, how about you guys? Are you still with me? Or nag open na kayo ng Netflix tab? <laughs> Shado ba mabilis? Parang nahapo ako doon. Parang bilis ng pagsasalita ko. But uh, what do you think, guys? Oy, paramdam naman kayo kung nandyan pa kayo. Okay. Thank you, uh, Mary Antoinette. How about the others? Is it still fine? Or anyone you know, because uh, super basic no examples natin. <laughs> but this would be a nice practice before we go to uh, proving arbitrary uh, statements involving limits. Okay, so example three showcases one tool that you have already learned in Math uh, 36. For instance, uh, if you want to prove that the limit of x squared as x approaches three is equal to nine. Uh, as a matter of convention, when we didn't specify what the domain of the function is, we will, we will assume that this is the largest possible domain. In this case, ang pinakamalaking posibleng domain ng x squared ay set of all real numbers. Okay? Now, since that is the case, then uh, medyo tricky yung paggawa ng preliminary analysis. Though it's already written here, let's uh, do it from scratch. So again, we will be given a challenge epsilon. We want to find the response delta such that if uh, the absolute value of x minus 3 is uh, between 0 and delta, then it should follow that the absolute value of f of x, which is x squared, minus the supposed limit is less than epsilon. Okay. Again, the, the thing here is we want to write the absolute value of f of x minus l to be kind of similar to the absolute value of x minus a. And that's not hard because we can note that the absolute value of x squared minus 9 is the product of the absolute values of x minus 3 and x plus 3. And we're done with the first one because by assumption, or by our to be assumption in the formal proof, absolute value of x minus 3 is bounded above by delta. So, papaltan ko siya ng delta, tas ito yung problema ko ngayon. Kailangan kong palitan si x plus 3 by something. Okay? Uh, I need to bound it by some number, by a, preferably some constant that doesn't depend on x. Right? So, kung matatandaan nyo, usapan natin sa intuitive notion ng limit, habang palapit ng palapit si x kay 3, dapat palapit ng palapit yung function values kay l. So, in the context of this problem, as x's become very, very close to 3, then x squared must be very, very close to the value 9. So, ibig sabihin, hindi pala tayo uh, concerned kung ano yung nangyayari kapag ka yung x's ay medyo malayo pa dun sa number, uh, dun sa number c, dun sa limit point na number c. So, we have some freedom to, uh, to impose something on x plus 3. So, for instance, pwede kong tingnan ito sa isang mas maliit na domain which is more intimate with respect to the number 3. Kasi ang kunukunan natin ng limit ay uh, yung function as x's approaches or as x's approach 3. So nandun lang ako nakafocus sa mga x's na napakalapit kay 3. So basically, maybe I can say na say, uh, suppose absolute value of x minus 3 is less than 1. Okay? Kunwari, ang absolute value ng x minus 3 ay mas maliit lamang kay 1. Okay? Kasi nga, ang concern lang natin yung mga sobrang lalapit kay 3. So, halimbawa, pagpalagay ko, ang, ang kinoconsider ko lamang ay yung mga x's that are uh, within one unit away from the number 3. Kasi I don't care pag, an, kung ano yung behavior ng function kapag ka yung x's ay medyo malayo pa galing kay 3. Uh, medyo uh, vague yung sinabi kong medyo malayo pa, 
Uh, in fact, you can choose this to be any constant that you like. All right. But essentially, for simplicity, the usual choice is one, but you can be fancy about it. Pwede ko sigurong sabihin pagka natipuhan ko tong ipa, um, ipa homework ay um, etong one ay palitan nyo ng say uh, last uh, or palitan nyo by your uh, year of birth or halimbawa palitan nyo siya ng, uh, um, ng number of uh, items sa, sa Lazada uh, um, cart nyo for today in preparation for 11.11. Okay, so mga tipong ganon. So the choice of the right-hand side here is quite arbitrary. You can choose anything, okay? But common choice is one. And this, by definition of a continued inequality, would be this continued inequality over here, all right? And then remember, our goal is to find a bound for x plus 3, or for the absolute value of x plus 3. So gusto ko, yung bound ko dito, ay o yung nasa gitna ng continued inequality ay maging x plus 3. I can do that by adding uh, what? By adding uh, 3 to all sides. Uh, sorry, adding 6 to both sides. If I do that, I'll get 5 less than x plus 3 less than ano yung ginama ko? Plus 6, no? 9. So here we see that uh, pero yung 5 definitely ay less than negative 9. So we see that absolute value of x plus 3 is less than 9. So that tells us that this... Tama ba? Mm, mali pala. Bakit wala nag-react? <laughs> Huli ko tuloy na hindi kayo nakikinig. So nag-add ako ng... Ano ang in ko? Na dito pala mali na ako. Dapat ito ay 1. Tapos nagdagdag ako ng 6 to both sides. This should have been 7. And then lower bound si negative 7 pa rin para lang matranslate ko siya sa isang continued inequality. So we see here that the absolute value of x plus 3 is less than 7. So I'll have a time 7 here. And I will force the issue that this is less than delta. Ah, uh, sorry, less than epsilon. So basically here, we can choose uh, delta to be less than or equal to epsilon over 7. And at the same time, that uh, delta should also be less than 1. Right? Kasi naglagay ako ng isang additional assumption na si absolute value of x minus 3 ay hindi lamang mas maliit kay delta, pero dapat mas maliit din siya kay 1. Now, if the absolute value of uh, x minus 3 is less than delta, uh, if we want to have that as our, as our assumption, choosing delta to be less than epsilon over 7 should be fine. However, we have added an extraneous assumption here. Out of the blue, we said, na, okay, maybe I could assume that the absolute value of x minus 3 is less than 1. So, ibig sabihin, yung choice ko ng delta ay dapat mas maliit sa parehas na epsilon over 7 at saka kay 1. Para pag sure ako na maliit sila kesa uh, dun sa dalawang numbers na yon, ibig sabihin, ito ay magiging totoo, this guy is also true, then we'll get the desired inequality. So that's why here we will uh, choose our delta to be uh, any number. Okay, it could be chosen to be any number which is less than the minimum between 1 and epsilon over 7. Okay? Uh, remember, ang delta gusto natin ay maliit enough. It should be sufficiently small. So pwede kayong mag-hedge on the more uh, conservative side and choose a very, very small delta, smaller than necessary. Pero yung choice of delta, hindi siya dapat lalaki dun sa minimum between 1 and epsilon over 7. Now, if you chose a number here aside from 1, then your choice of delta will be different because you'll be choosing your delta to be between the minimum of whatever you elected here as your right-hand side and the multiple of epsilon we got from this final answer here. Pero ang idea, yung delta pa rin ay dapat yung minimum between dun sa dalawang numbers na yan. Okay? Now, how will this translate into a formal proof? Let's read what was done in the, in the, in the lecture note. 
So again, we issued a uh, we issued a um, challenge epsilon. Then we said our response would be the minimum between one and epsilon over seven. Okay, and then part no assumption, conditional proof. Remember, uh, kinukuha kong part ng assumption yung antecedent. So we want to show that if the absolute value of x minus three is strictly between zero and delta, we want to show that absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon, okay? But this is part of the assumption, but remember, delta was chosen to be the smaller between one and epsilon over seven. So definitely, delta is less than or equal to one, right? Kasi nga si delta ay mas maliit kay, yung mas maliit kay one at saka kay epsilon over seven. So definitely, it, this inequality will also follow that the absolute value of x minus 3 is between 0 and 1. And we learned from our preliminary analysis that we will get the bound for the absolute value of x plus 3, the second factor we need to get x squared minus 9, coming from this continued inequality here. All right? And you can manipulate this using the same technique that we have seen in the uh, preliminary analysis. So it's exactly. We do the same thing, we get absolute value of x plus 3 is less than 7 over there. And then this guy is less than delta. This guy is less than 7. When we multiply them, there's uh, the absolute value of x minus 3 times the absolute value of x plus 3 will be less than 7 delta. Okay, but delta is smaller than epsilon over 7. All right. So si delta, pwede mong palitan ng epsilon over 7, but the resulting thing would be less than or equal to, right? Uh, correction again, dapat less than or equal to. So pag pinaltan ko to ng epsilon over 7, I'll get an equal or a larger number. 7 times epsilon over 7 will be epsilon. And there, we have seen that absolute value of x squared minus 9 will be less than epsilon. And that will end the proof. Okay. So I hope that refreshed your memory on how to prove uh, how to prove um, how to prove statements involving limits. Okay. Uh, questions. Voila. So you can try some of the exercises here. Um, but it seems that so far we define the limit of a function to be independent of the things that we have learned from the concept of sequences. And that could be a fair development of the concept of limits and continuity. Kung matatanan nyo nga sa Math 36, nag-start kagad kayo sa limit ng isang function. Hindi kayo dumaan sa limit ng sequences. So definitely, this could be treated as an independent uh, topic from the limit of uh, from the yeah from the limit of sequences. However, I think historically mathematician always attach limits of functions to limit of sequences, and that's what uh, section two is all about. Uh, what is the relationship between limit of sequences and limit of functions? So I'm thinking, can we still finish this? I still have 14 minutes. Perhaps I can start this. Okay. So ang idea ay, pwede nating balikan yung example natin kanina, yung Dirichlet, uh, yung Dirichlet function, f of x ay equal kay 1 kapag ka si x ay rational, 0 kapag ka si x ay irrational. All right? So nakita natin dun sa example kanina, yung argument ko kanina, na kapag ka dumaan ako sa mga rationals, ang limit na makukuha ko ay 1, pag dumaan ako sa mga irrational, sa makukuha ko ang limit ay 0, so definitely the limit uh, should not exist to remove some ambiguities to it, all right? So um, basically, ang um, reasoning ko doon ay dumaan ako sa sequence of rationals and sequence of irrational numbers para makarating kay one half, all right? So kaya nung kinuha ko yung limit ng f of x as x approaches one half. Dumaan ako sa sequences consisting of rational numbers and sequences consisting of irrational numbers. So definitely there would be a very big uh, connection 
between the limits of sequences and limit of functions. And that relationship is uh, summarized in theorem 3.1. It says here that uh, we can start with a function f defined on a subset A of R to the set of real numbers with the only condition that x sub zero, the limiting point, is a limit point of A. So, pwede natin kuna ng limit ng isang function as x approaches x sub zero as long as x sub zero is a limit point of the number A, right? Uh, that means x sub zero may or may not be part of A. We don't care, right? Then this theorem tells us that So this tells us na etong dalawang statements na to ay equivalent. Uh, statement number one, the limit of f of x as x approaches zero, uh, x sub zero is equal to L. And we are claiming in this theorem that that is equivalent if for all sequences contained in A, uh, except those constant sequences where in x sub n is equal to uh, x sub zero, then if the sequence converges to x sub zero, then it follows that uh, the limit of f of x n as n approaches infinity i equal k l. So yung part number one, medyo clear pa yan sa atin kanina. So ito yung um, epsilon delta definition and limit, okay? Pero medyo kakaiba yung part number two. But this is what we call the sequential criterion for functional limits. Or this makes theorem 3.1 the sequential criterion for functional limits. Anong sinasabi niya? Sinasabi niya lang na kumuha ka ng kahit anong sequence that is contained on the set A except x sub 0. So ang mga terms ng sequence x sub n ay mga elements ni, ni A pero not possibly equal to x sub 0. Kasi nga si x sub 0 may or may not belong to A. Pero ang usapan, walang x sub n ang equal kay x sub 0. And then this sequence, further, assume further that this sequence converges to x sub 0. So meron kang kahit anong sequence na nagko-converge kay x sub 0. Then, form the sequence of function values. So meron kang sequence x sub n. Buin mo yung sequence consisting of function values. All right? And kung totoo yung number one, ang limit ng f of x as x approaches x sub zero ay equal kay L, then nagko-converge yung sequence of function values kay L then. All right? So basically what this is saying is that the if the limit of your function as x approaches x sub zero is equal to L, then pag kumuha ka ng kahit anong sequence na nasa loob ni A na nagko-converge papunta kay x sub zero, Tapos binuo mo yung sequence ng mga function values, sure ka na yung, na yung uh, sequence of function values will converge to the same number L. And the converse is also true. If kahit ano pang sequence ang buuin mo sa loob ni A, such that that sequence X sub N will converge to X sub zero, tapos ang limit ng uh, sequence of function values ay equal kay L, then automatically, kahit hindi ka dumaan sa epsilon delta, ang limit ni f of x as x approaches zero ay equal kay L. Okay? So I just want to emphasize that the first statement here is limit of a function. Okay? Which we develop in section 3.1. While this statement here, or the crux of the second statement, is about the limit of a sequence. All right, so yung dalawang statement na daw, na daw yan ay equivalent sa isa't isa. So kung ang limit ng function f, okay, limit ng function f ay equal kay L, then magpa-follow na kapag ka meron kang kahit anong sequence x sub n na nagko-converge kay x sub 0, and we are sure that that uh, sequence will exist because si x sub 0 ay isang limit point. Remember yung characterization natin ng limit points before? Kapag ka limit point ang isang number ng isang set, laging may nag exist na sequence dun sa set na yon na nagko-converge dun sa limit point. So dahil si x sub 0 ay isang limit point, makakakita tayo ng at least isang sequence x sub n 
na nagko-converge kay x sub 0. Alright? Tapos, pag kinolekta natin lahat ng sequences sa loob ni A na nagko-converge kay x sub 0, then sure na tayo na ang limit ng sequence of function values, so yung mga f of x sub n's, dapat magko-converge kay L. Kahit sino pang sequence ng xn na yon, as long as nagko-converge siya kay x sub 0. Alright? And again, conversely, totoo rin yung pakabila. Kapag ka kinuha mo lahat ng sequences na nagko-converge kay x sub 0, tapos kinuha mo yung sequence ng function values, tapos nakita mo yung sequence ng function values or lahat ng sequences ng function values ay nagko-converge kay L, then walang tanong-tanong yung limit ng function f as x approaches x sub 0 ay equal din kay L. Okay. Now this might be a uh, a very uh, a very big thing to ask. Uh, kasi pag alam mo yung limit ay equal kay L, then madale yung one implying two. Pero yung two implying one, medyo mahirap. Pag gusto mong compute ng limit ng isang function na hindi dadaan sa limit theorems o sa epsilon delta, ang kailangan mong gamitin ay kunin mo lahat ng sequences na nagko-converge kay x sub 0. Dapat lahat. Dapat lahat ng sequence na nagko-converge kay x sub n. Ah, lahat ng sequence x sub n na nagko-converge kay, kay x sub 0. Tapos binumo yung corresponding sequences of function values. So iba't iba yung mga f of x sub n. Kasi posible meron kang iba't ibang x sub n. Pag lahat ng sequences ng mga f of x sub n ay nagko-converge kay l, sure ka na na yung limit ng function ay equal kay L. Pero mahirap yun kasi posibleng infinitely many sequences kay A ang nagko-converge kay X sub 0. So theorem 3.1 uh, is not very useful at the, at the current form. It is stated, but it would be a nice, um, um, a nice uh, criterion for the negative. Na kapag ka nakakita ka ng dalawang sequences, na nagko-converge kay x sub 0, pero magkaiba yung, uh, yung limit ng sequence of function values, then yung limit hindi nag -e exist Yun yung tatawagin natin mamayang uh, divergence criterion para sa isang function or discontinuity criterion para sa isang function. Okay? So we can go back uh, just to end with this example I have presented earlier, Dirichlet's function. Okay? Now, Si 1 half ay limit point. So pag kumuha ko ng sequence of uh, rational numbers uh, converging to 1 half, ano ba yung mga example na to? Pwede kong kunin ay 1 over 1 plus 2 over, ah, uh, sorry. 1 over 1 plus, ah, uh, sorry. 2 plus 1 over n, right? So yung sequence sa mga 1 over 2 plus 1 over n, obviously this is a sequence of rational numbers, okay? Uh, kaya niya yung simplify. Tapos when n approaches infinity, this guy goes to 0, so ang limit niya ay 1 half. E mga rational numbers to. Pag binuuko yung sequence of um, function values, puro 1 si makikita ko, right? Kasi yung f of this guys ay lahat equal kay 1, kasi rational nga sila. So, ibig sabihin, if I'll be using that sequence, the limit will appear to be equal to 1. Pero pag nag-consider ako ng mga irrational, uh, irrational numbers, I will form a sequence of irrational numbers converging to 1 half. One example would be 1 over what? 2 plus pi over n. Okay. So, this is irrational, pi over n. 2 plus an irrational number is irrational. 1 divided by an irrational number is irrational. So these guys are irrational numbers, and yet they will converge to 1 half. All right? Tapos pag kinuha natin yung sequence ng mga function values ng mga numbers na to, uh, makukuha ko ay sequence na puro zeros ang laman, or sequence na puro zeros yung term. All right? Tapos yung sequence na yun, obviously, since it's a constant sequence, it will converge to zero then that means we have found two sequences of x sub n's. So both um, converging to one half, 
but they gave different sequ uh, different uh, but the sequence of function values have different limits therefore the limit doesn't exist okay so but maybe uh, no over introduce ko na spoil ko yung susunod na section but that's the idea so what we'll do on Thursday is to try to prove theorem 3.1 but i hope you guys uh, have an intuitive notion of what uh, theorem 3.1 means and what is its uh, practical application later but we'll do that on uh, Thursday na lang. and then hopefully we finish uh, section 3.2 on uh, Thursday okay all right uh, any questions before we call it a day Okay, just a final reminder, check your uh, your standings, your midterm standings in Canvas. Uh, please uh, tell me if there are any uh, corrections there. And also, please answer homework five. Uh, Paki-submit na lang para alam ko na yung, para ma-adjust ko if ever yung uh, computation ng standing nyo. Uh, but other than that, I think uh, uh, we're all good. So thank you guys for joining me this afternoon. Kahit nakikinig lang kayo dyan, so that's fine with me. As long as I, uh, as long as I see some of your uh, display pictures here in my screen, um, and then uh, I hope you have a good night, and then let's see each other again on Thursday. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so